In this episode, we will illustrate with an example the technique for optimizing memory traffic by improving the temporal locality of data access. The example that we will use is matrix vector multiplication. We have a matrix A of size M by N, and we multiply it by vector B, which has size M, to obtain vector C, which has size N. Let's assume that vector B is large enough not to fit in the level 1 cache or even the level 2 cache of a core. This is where loop tiling may be important. It is easy enough to construct a matrix vector multiplication function that uses multi-threading and is also vectorized. We have to parallelize with OpenMP the outer loop that iterates through the matrix rows, and we can expect automatic vectorization in the inner loop that iterates through matrix columns. The inner loop has unit stride access to memory, so this implementation has good spatial locality of data access. But what about temporal locality? For matrix A, temporal locality does not matter because we read it from memory just once and each element is used once. But for vector B, temporal locality is important because every element of B is used m times. As we mentioned, vector B is assumed to be so large that it does not fit in cache. In an optimal solution, vector B will be read from memory only once and each element will be reused from cache m times. The memory traffic in B will be insignificant compared to reading the matrix A. But in a poorer solution, vector B will be read from memory m times, which may double the calculation time compared to the optimal solution. If we don't do anything, we can expect this code to be suboptimal because each element of B is revisited only after streaming the entire vector from memory. By the time we reach the end of B, the beginning of B will be gone from the cache. Now let's apply cache blocking to this problem as we discussed in the previous episode. With cache blocking, the innermost loop will have a length j tile, which we found to have an optimal value of 4096. So every element of B fetched from memory will be reused after 4096 iterations. 4096 elements of B is a small enough dataset to fit into cache, so this algorithm reduces the memory traffic in B. To understand how we arrived to this algorithm, recall that loop tiling is the result of two operations, strip mining and permutation. We strip mined the loop in J and permuted the outer two loops. But in this implementation, the outer loop is now in double J rather than in I. So different threads can operate on the same value of I. To avoid race conditions, we implemented reduction using thread private containers, as we discussed in the episode about parallelizing the binning calculation. A part of this procedure is reduction using atomic constructs at the end of the loop. This code demonstrates the loop tiling procedure for memory traffic optimization. However, to apply this procedure, we have to use technique discussed earlier in the course. We're using street mining, parallel reduction, data alignment, and compiler hints. If those techniques do not sound familiar, refer to earlier episodes. We will continue the discussion of this example and it will make us recall one more issue that we discussed in episode 5.10, dealing with insufficient parallelism. In the optimized code, the outer loop has the number of iterations equal to n divided by j tile, where j tile is in the thousands. Even if we have a long vector b, we have thinned out the outer loop by 4096, so now we may have too few iterations to saturate all memory controllers. As we saw in episode 5.10, the solution to the problem is loop collapse. However, prior to loop collapse, strip mining the inner loop may help. This code shows the next optimization step for matrix vector calculation. Compared to the previous code, we now have strip mind loop in double i, and the OpenMP loop has the clause collapse too. This clause expands the number of iterations exposed to OpenMP. The strip width for the i loop is chosen as 64. This value is empirical, just like the value of j tile. In other words, we had to try different values until we finally settled on those. Additionally, we experimented with order of loops. Turns out that having the loop in double i outside of the loop in double j works better than the opposite ordering. 
it may be possible to explain the values of the tile size and loop orders. They are related to cache sizes per core and locality of data access. However, it is very challenging to prescribe methods for determining the optimal tile sizes and loop nesting orders without measurements. In practice, the trial and error method is the best way to find the optimal parameters. Of course, tuning may yield different values for different platforms. At the same time, performance of loop tiled algorithms may be very sensitive to tuning parameters. To see how we can produce a more portable solution which self-adopts to different platforms, let's discuss another method of improving temporal locality of data access, cache oblivious recursion. This diagram reports performance of the tiled algorithm and gives a preview of performance results that we will achieve in the next episode. The difference between non-optimized code and optimized code is of order 20 to 30 percent. This may be significant for some applications, but of course this is not acceleration by orders of magnitude that we saw in other examples. Matrix vector multiplication spends most of the time reading matrix A, and our optimization only improved the reading of factor B, so it is not surprising that the performance difference is modest. At the same time, in many applications, for example in matrix-matrix multiplication and in discrete fast Fourier transforms, a memory traffic tuning can give performance improvements by larger factors. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below this video. See you in the next episode where we'll discuss cache oblivious recursion that produces the last set of bars in this diagram.